And then the next thing you know, there's just blood all over the inside of the cabin and there's nobody flying the plane. But it turns mm -hmm. out at the end, you realize that they were all working to not have him ever be found in their own way. Oh, that'd be awesome. Some guy would take a cigar out of his mouth and go, I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Print it. Welcome to the podcast where we talk about the big ideas behind fiction projects of all different kinds. Books, movies, TV shows, video games, nothing's off limits. Today the guys are doing another story break episode where they pitch and workshop one of their original ideas. We hope, oh, hold on, looks like they've already started. Yep, okay, they're talking. All right, here we go. Every second. Yep, get your monster soda. Yep. Sit there all night. all nighter, baby. Plug and unplug and wires. Why isn't this working? Running spools. I have got this. Seen, I got this. Have you ever seen the DJ uh, Dead Mouse? Like he I has this so. set yeah, up in yeah. his in his place. Like if uh -huh. you YouTube it, you should be able to find it. Because I took his master class because I was just curious, like how he makes that music. Uh huh. It's like a multi million dollar setup that he just has at his house, exactly like what you're saying. There's uh, wires running into wires, running into all these decks and keep, I don't even know how you would set this thing up. And like, it, it would probably take like a team of technicians, like a week to actually like set it up in your house and then figuring out what to do with all that shit. I'm like, very impressive, Dead Mouse. This is, this is something. This isn't like my MacBook Pro trying to download a <laughs> plugin. You know, it's like an entire orchestra and like sound mixing studio in your house. He, he sounds like the uh, Pee Wee Herman of music, you know, like Pee, <laughs> Pee Wee making breakfast, you know, with the egg rolling down. Uh -huh. and <laughs> what are those called, those machines? Uh, Mousetraps? I don't no, know. They have a name for like something that's overly complicated. Mm. And Is you it make a machine. It's a Jason, an overly complicated <laughs> human machine. <laughs> that makes a big mess, it completely mess. unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Doesn't that really no serve the up. purpose. And he was just trying to fry an egg. And that was <laughs> Which he doesn't eat. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to not talk about dead heat. We'll have to do that next episode. We'll have to do that. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to rewatch it recently. I would like to watch that. Let me write that down in my, my to do's. <laughs> dead heat. Dead heat. Now, if I die and someone finds my diary, they'll know. They'll be like, what is dead heat? It'll be like Rosebud in Citizen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to just write dead heat movie with Joe Piscopo. No hidden <laughs> meaning. <laughs> exactly what it yeah. sounds like. Looking to waste some of my time. Dead heat. What was he doing? What was he thinking of doing? We're on it, boss. We could also talk about treat williams and his amazing would, career would you really want to do that though well is there i didn't reason to you're saying there? because there's so many great films it's too much oh which treat williams are you talking about isn't he the uh co-star am i getting yeah, his I'm just, name i'm just joking it's uh, probably okay. only one treat williams the one Star. only trees treat williams if you hear me treat williams <laughs> no no i know there's only one of you it needs its own podcast i guess the treat williams podcast treat williams podcast. we call it um Starring mm, not here for the treats, but <laughs> <laughs> sweet treats, Williams. sweet treats, yeah, sweet treat Williams podcast. Yeah, we can do season one on Deep Rising, I think probably his finest film or his only film. How many movies has Tree Williams? Oh, uh, are you kidding me? We need a research. Are you drunk? Did you hit podcast, your head? Write that down. Tree Williams has been in more movies than you can count to. Wow, so He's like a massive star, or at least 11. You know, when you think about like <laughs> the human backbone, it supports so much. You don't always see it, but you know, it's there. Treat Williams has done so many movies that he is like the human backbone of Hollywood. He's <laughs> in so many important pieces. He's the connective tissue. He's, he's the all... collagen, as the kids would say. They're, yeah, the, the kids. <laughs> it's a little cliche, but yeah, if you want to be hip and street, he's uh -huh. the collagen, yo. <laughs> and Deep Rising is probably his best movie in my opinion. It's, that's not true one of my favorites deep rising was the uh it's aliens on a cruise ship it's a real treat you would say that's the name of the podcast it's a real it's treat, a real treat. 
parentheses, you would say. Season one, Dead Heat and Deep Rising. <laughs> All right, so it's time again for Story Break. Tree Williams, the actor. I put it in my, oh, okay. my journal. <laughs> Before we get the story break, we're going to make sure. Let's clear you, this all up. You got an organized and planned Treat Williams movie film binge festival. <laughs> Is there like a special streaming service for Treat Williams? Do you think? Uh, yeah, Treat Williams Plus, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Little treat and chill. <laughs> treat Plus. Oh, if no one listens to this podcast, I've enjoyed it. I just want to let you know. Good. All right. Off to a great start. And we haven't even gotten to story break, which we're going to do now. And what's that story break jingle again? It's time for story break. Story break. A couple of idiots are going to take you on a wild ride through an amazing story and they're gonna drive it into the ground just like this theme <laughs> and no bill cosby and no bill cosby great <laughs> now that we got that out of the way okay. i think every week we should take a shot at the theme <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just fail oh man and this can get more and more elaborate i love it the pitch this week very different than previous ones so i'm thinking this is going to be much more of a dark drama, all right? So it's a story about a professional pilot. He has his own private jet, and he flies wealthy, famous people, you know, people, anyone who can afford to pay to rent it for him to fly them one place to another, right? So that's kind of the premise, is like every episode, I'm thinking TV show, it doesn't have to be. But every episode, he has like a different wealthy or famous person who's booked a flight and he flies them wherever they want to go. So traveling all over the country, maybe Mexico, maybe Canada, like North America, but he just has this plane and he arranges to store it where he goes and people pay him and he flies around. Oh, and he also sometimes rents out seats for people to come in and take pictures for social media or if they want to do like a party on a private jet, but while it's in the hangar or on the runway, if he can arrange that and stuff like that. So this is kind of his gig. He's also a killer, but he only kills billionaires. Hmm. So he's flying around, he's doing all this stuff, interesting people, and he only kills billionaires. So what do you think so far? Is there something there? I think there could be. Yeah. Okay. I like where, where would you go with that? I have a lot of questions as to why does he kill billionaires? I don't know if you would have to establish that early or whether later on in the series or mini series or whatever you want to do with it, if you find out that that's the one thing that they have in common. But is it just the fact that they're billionaires? Are they in a specific industry? Are they finance guys for some reason? Or they're industrialists that have done something to him or his family? There's a good chance or a good opportunity to have a lot of backstory with it. But I think maybe just the fact that they're billionaires is too broad. It would be interesting to niche it down more than that, because you're assuming anyone who's on these jets is rich, whether they're a millionaire or a billionaire, right? right. Is that, that going to drive the plot forward? Like, what are you thinking about in terms of that? Like, why the billionaire premise as opposed to just a rich guy? Okay, so the question is why? Why does he kill? And you were saying there's different types of billionaires. Let's just to stick with billionaires for now, because yeah. millions not as much as it used to be. Mm -hmm. So there's different types of billionaires. And why he kills which ones can be tied to that. My original idea was that he doesn't know why he does it. And the audience doesn't know why he does it. Now that I'm listening to you, I'm thinking maybe in hindsight, there is a pattern. And it ultimately ties to the explanation. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So yeah. maybe there's something that he was reacting to that was there all along that isn't obvious for maybe the first season or two. Like, obviously, everybody, the first question is, why is he killing billionaires? Why? Mm -hmm. I think the one way to go is answer that early and just say, okay, yeah, he's doing it for this reason. But another way to go is he doesn't know and he finds out over the course of the series. And the audience finds out. And I thought if you do that, or if we do that with the story, then it's really important to anticipate all the questions, all the complaints that people like audience members would have based on not knowing why he's doing this or not being told. 
and then heading them off, trying to head them off in the story by addressing them either explicitly or, or subtly, you know, so that it kind of renders the question less important. Does that make sense? Yeah, I see what you're saying. I, I think you could do on. that. Yeah, I think you could pull that off. I'm just wondering if it would be something that you haven't seen before. Is the fact that this pilot has so much access? It's something I've never really seen. It's like in every movie you see or every show, whenever a billionaire is flying private, the pilot is like an afterthought. Right. He's just someone who, he's like a chauffeur who can't hear what's going on right. in the cabin. And but that's if, one of the things that contributes to him getting away with this. But go ahead. I was going to say, what if he had installed listening devices mm. in this cabin? So he's able to blackmail these guys. Interesting. And that becomes like a, that adds like a whole new layer of co complexity to the plot. You see him flying with one of these guys in an episode or when it starts. Mm -hmm. And then you see him kind of taking all these steps, but you don't know what he's doing, like where these things are connected. But okay. it's all based on the conversation that he heard or conversations that he's heard from the cabin. Right. So he's blackmailing this guy or setting this elaborate kind of trap where he can has like some kind of financial gain from it. Okay. And he's able to kill this guy at the end. Because that could be a movie, I would think, you know, because it kind of takes this, the pilot, you could even have it where you don't even know that it's the pilot who's doing this, like ruining this guy's life. You know, oh, it's just part of what this guy's doing in day to day. Like you see him mm -hmm. flying around, he's got chauffeurs, he's got bodyguards, he's got this and that. Like he's under contract with this guy. No, it's just one face in a crowd is what you're saying. Yeah, it's just one face in a crowd, but even yeah. the pilot could be hired by his like enemy and maybe this guy is like some kind of ex-military pilot he has some kind mm -hmm. of special training but it turns it more into like a, a spy type of thriller maybe something intrigue along those lands. yeah yeah but, like corporate intrigue kind of a thing yeah maybe. where he's being this guy's being blackmailed all these things are falling apart in his life like these big deals that he had going aren't going anymore and the way they're falling apart is like a lot more complicated and little by little you start finding out it's the pilot who's been doing this whole so thing. So it's like a whodunit. It, you turned it into like a mystery whodunit, but but isn't it more who hired the pilot at that point? I think it's who hired the pilot, but I mean, if this guy's a recurring character, it can be like, you know, this pilot has this military background. He's a killer. He's a hired killer, kind of like a mercenary. Why is he doing mm. what he's doing? Maybe mm -hmm. there's a backstory there that he has like a certain reason for being in this position where he's trying to get to some top guy or one specific guy. But along the way, he's kind of getting rid of these other guys that he's being contracted oh, with. Oh, okay. Wait. So in that version, the pilot is the main character. The clients that hire him to fly, he's working his way through them to some sort of end goal that we don't know until he reaches it. Yeah. I think is that where you're going with that? Yeah, I was going more toward that like born identity. Like he doesn't know who he is, but he's doing mm. all these things and he's being kind of controlled. But I see the way that you're looking at it in terms of like he's murdering these billionaires. But well, but building on what you were saying, yeah, not to interrupt, but just what you were just saying, the way I was thinking about this character, there's a lot of complexity with him. I thought he might be addicted to drugs as well. And so he's this pilot and he looks, he's a you know professional jet pilot and he looks all put together and he needs to present himself that way, but he's addicted to drugs and he's killing clients and just use taking advantage of the travel that he does to like dispose of bodies and cover his tracks. But it's often done either while he's under the influence of a substance or it's not as premeditated from his point of view, but then it's executed in kind of a premeditated way. And so for me, the struggle of this character and the audience to understand him would be around control. Like there'd be like a running theme of control. So whether it's drugs, like, is he losing control? Is he trying to use them to control himself? You know, flying the plane can be about control. Like the way he kills people can be about control. And so that opens up a lot of hypotheses about why he's choosing these particular people. And you can explore that over time. And maybe the audience won't be so frustrated that you didn't open by explaining his motivation. Does right. that make sense? Yeah, it does. Are you seeing it where he, little by little, 
he starts falling apart as he's doing this job. Like you see Ooh, like him that. kind of yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. more put together at first. He's trying to hold it together, but there's like a series of incidents, the way they're treating him, things they're making him do, his interactions with these guys, where he decides to do something more extreme, like what I was saying, where he like bugs the cabin. Uh-huh. And maybe after one of those flights, when that billionaire guy, if we were going to move in that direction, like his life starts falling apart, the billionaire guy, and he mm-hmm. realizes the only person that it could be is his pilot. So then he goes back on the plane at one point and he figures out that the cabin's bugged. So like some kind of struggle ensues and the pilot kills his passenger and now uh... he has to get rid of him. But how do you get rid of a billionaire? And that becomes like the dilemma of the movie. I like that. Something you said a minute ago, I think, is better or fits nicely into what I was thinking and also what you were just saying. If the series is about control and he's unraveling over the course of the season, you know, assuming it gets one season, right? Let's just say it gets however many episodes, one season. Maybe it starts off and he has no history of a lot of these things. Like maybe, you know, he's had some brushes with substances or something like that, but he's well put together you know, what you would expect or want from a pilot. And then something happens in the pilot. Maybe it's what you're saying. And we watch him unravel. He can't always predict what he's going to do and where he's going to go. And he finds himself unraveling and wrestling with control of himself and his life. And sometimes the plane polish forward thinking and planning being meticulous and executing like a flight plan essentially Mm -hmm. versus the other side, which is slowly falling apart, not understanding why you're unraveling mentally doing things or finding yourself in situations where you're doing things that are inconsistent with how you make sense of yourself, Mm -hmm. but then trying to pull it back together and then sort of succeeding, but then being disrupted again and just back and forth. And that Mm -hmm. could even be visualized by his control of the plane in different circumstances. Yeah, I see where you And it could start at. with a murder, like you were saying, where he found himself in a situation where he killed someone and had to figure out how to dispose of a billionaire's body and cover his tracks without even realizing that's what he was going to do. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't intend to kill him, but then didn't, you know, he thought about turning himself in, but didn't. And before he knew it, he'd already taken the steps to cover right. his tracks or just push yeah. his body out of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah whatever and then yeah, whatever. Get, just jump into the next episode yeah. but i really like this because i could see this being a movie and i okay. can clearly see it being a series as a movie you could simplify that plot down where this like pivotal incident where he ends up killing this billionaire mm-hmm. becomes the mm-hmm. whole crux of the whole right thing. and the race is on up, and when he hides the body he thinks he's you know scot-free mm-hmm. but there's an elaborate investigation going on behind the scenes to try to figure out who it was it's mm-hmm. him trying to keep it together like, what's he going to do? Is he going to run? Is he not going to run? Is he going to get caught? How is this all going to go down? And then there's the whole series part where maybe he's a, a pilot, a legitimate pilot. His life is falling apart. He has a drug mm-hmm. problem. He has family mm-hmm. problems because he can go into all of those things now that it's a series, right? Like, he has the ex-wife, if you want, kids, the whole thing. Right. And, you know, maybe he likes prostitutes on the side. Like, there's this whole personal life drama where he's a legitimate pilot, but he starts stumbling starts screwing up like they start covering up that he was maybe doing drugs or whatever it is and he starts getting more and more desperate we have a situation where he realizes that he needs money not that he hadn't realized before but he comes to this awakening like wait a minute i've got these super rich guys that i'm flying around maybe there's a way for me to make this work for my benefit he overhears this guy talking on the phone about a way that he could possibly get in on making some money or there's some deal going on that he could maybe get involved with maybe approaches the guy the guy's like i don't know what you're talking about you know i'm going to tell your boss whatever it is he kills the guy he then hides the body but he gets away with it and then the series becomes like he starts getting involved in more and more criminal type of activity kind of like a breaking bad i like that let me let me jump in what if building on what you were saying he has these other relationships but every person in his life is somebody who either wouldn't seem to fit with his pilot polished persona, his like controlled version of himself, mm-hmm. or they also have kind of a, a wild side or a broken side. And so that sort of foreshadows that there's another side to him. Mm-hmm. And I like your idea of him hearing something, but I would want to change it a little bit and say it wasn't premeditated. Like he was flying 
he happened to leave the intercom on or this guy was oh, super see. loud and like talking right outside yeah, the, yeah. not That's realizing clever. it's not yeah. sound and he's about right. to say something to him with the intercom Okay. He yeah. Just, right. Right. Well, I don't think that's how intercoms something? work, but yeah. No, but isn't couldn't he open it up or whatever? So I don't know. I mean, I'm yes. Yes. No. 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 Listen, we're right. We've invented this plane. It's a. It's whatever, whether you can or can't. That's what happened, right? There's there's a vent that Bruce Willis would normally crawl through in a diehard you know, situation that goes from the cockpit to the passenger. You area. know, there's sillier plot points, right? Than this. Oh yeah. Like he oh, look, he could look up and there's like a vent like in a bathroom and he's like listening to the yeah. guy. Like, yeah. It's DNA controlled. DNA controls that. Uh, it can tell. Unless the guy's been shot. Unless he's been For shot. All of you that are he... listening to this right now, we're alluding it's true. to a previous episode about No, the that, is, that is a true fact. You're lying. They should know this if they don't know this. If you go into a bathroom on a plane and you haven't been shot, then it automatically takes the audio and plays it for the pilot. That is a feature. <laughs> Pilots lobbied hard for this. People should know that. It's nothing to do with past episodes. I think the people should know about the Adam Project, though. And oh, God. In episode two episodes ago, where we take a deep dive into the Adam Project, if you haven't listened to it, pause this episode and go or, listen to or it. Or it's now. the next episode. Because <laughs> who knows when we're going to release these? It could be a future episode. It could be a past episode. No, I still feel bad about that one because that movie is not that bad. It's fine. It is the definition of fine. Yeah, and, and not a like fine the podcast, which was a great segue. <laughs> I think the movie was probably better than the podcast. It probably was. <laughs> it was but longer. If you, but if I think you can, we can afford agree to see the longer. movie, you can afford to listen to this podcast because it's free. That's right. If you can afford to borrow someone's Netflix password, <laughs> I still think the barrier for entry on our podcast is probably higher than the Adam Project. Yeah, probably, yeah. So many ways. <laughs> so many ways. Yeah, it's an M4A file. Oh, God. You probably can't play back. Yeah. <laughs> what is it from the iPod? iPod, yeah. It's you can only iPod listen to file. it and on an iPod. It's a true podcast. It's a hipster <laughs> thing. You got if you don't yeah. understand, they don't only play on on a pod iPod. Uh, turn your record player down so you can hear us. All right. <laughs> And, and that was not a like fine the fine podcast, which was a great segue. Um, <laughs> All right, so so anyway, yeah. So back saying... to back to where we were. Right. So he overhears it, and I would love to tweak instead of it being about his financial gain, because I feel like the I have a lot of bills, so I'm going to break bad story. I don't like that. I don't feel like that's fresh. What do you think about if he's in the cockpit, he's flying? You know, this person, man, woman, doesn't matter or other is going on and on about something. And let's say it's like environmental, it's something terrible. Billionaires have a bad rap these days. And it's like, maybe he's gonna like shut down unionizing or like try to make everybody, he's trying to introduce the six day work week. You know? uh, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. And he's got yeah. an ironclad plan to like push it through Congress or something like that. And so Let's say that our pilot, and just stay with me, he's flying and he's sweating, even though it's you know calm or what, or maybe it's not. Maybe it's a little stormy. Oh, I like that. It's stormy. He's flying. This jerk off is yelling about this terrible issue that you know is a bad thing for the environment or children or animals. And our pilot's sweating. There's squawking coming from the radio and the audio is kind of weird. So you're not really sure where all the sounds are coming from. And then the next thing you know, there's just blood all over the inside of the cabin and there's nobody flying the plane. That's cut to the credits for the first episode. What do you think? Is that just to get the ball rolling? That's and then he has to get the to, ball rolling. Yeah. He has to roll it back from there and then maintain that balance between control and whatever's happening. He has to control the narrative. He has to control the plane. He has to control himself. And he's just losing the battle. What do you think? So we don't know what happened. So there's blood everywhere. We don't know what happens. It cuts to a totally different point in time. With our Well, no, it's, so it, yeah, it's like five minutes later or 20 minutes later. Right? Oh, okay, because I was thinking it would be really cool if it cuts and it's a completely different point in time. And then the story kind of like backs into that incident itself Ooh, okay okay right? yeah i don't know where I like that is. too but then we still end up in the same place where we have to pick up where we left off right or are you saying time jump from where bloody cabin there's a couple ways to do it i think you could go the bloody cabin 
incident. And then you could say like five years previous, and then it rolls into that incident. And that becomes like the climax of, or part of the climax of the episode or the movie and the resolution to that, there's a cliffhanger. And then you go into episode two. Oh, okay. Okay. You like a long runway, five years? No, let's, let's no. say five minutes. It doesn't matter. No, I mean, five, five, hours, days. Five, five days. Five days. Five days. Five, five years. years. You got, 50 you got years a lot of before. ground to cover. A lot of time jumps <laughs> a year years, later. Years. It's like a SpongeBob episode. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought if we're going to stick with this kind of vibe into the first episode, he's dumped the body, he's cleaned the plane, seems like he might get away with it. He's good. He's okay. Like this person he killed was a terrible person. Even the investigators are like, good. You know what I mean? Like they're a little unprofessional and they're like, good. You know, the like 100% was, kill him. Are we uh, sure that he 100% did it? In my mind, yes, but there's no evidence. This person has just vanished. So I guess you could say, no, we're not sure he's dead. But the fact that he disappeared, the investigators retracing his steps and they're like, okay, yeah, there's clearly footage of him leaving. We'll figure out how this guy faked that. But let's say, you know, that whatever, the investigator doesn't care. He's being sloppy. Or something like that, because this person was clearly hated in the middle of a controversy and like causing a lot of people grief. So, and just not a good person. So, or let's say the investigator has something against rich people. He hates the one percenters or something like that, right? Or he's racist or whatever. But for whatever reason, our pilot gets away with it. And it looks like he's gonna get his life back. He's gonna reestablish everything. And then he gets into drugs at the end. And you're like, why is he doing this? And that kind of leads into... The question is like, what's happening to this person? Why is he doing this? He doesn't know. Is he going to pull out of it? Is he going to pull out of this nosedive? Or is he just going to crash straight into the ground or something else? And that's what I would want to explore. And by the way, there's an awesome song called How to Fly by a band called Sticky Fingers, which oh. I think would be perfect for that like last scene or wherever it goes in the story. So what do you think? Where does that take you? You're talking about he gets into drugs, but he's on the plane still? Or are we talking about when he's... Well, yeah, I'm picturing him doing drugs in the cockpit, but, I like, see. maybe he got another gig, and it seems fine. You got in away with it. It's the end of the pilot or the whatever part of the film. And we don't know where this guy went or how he got rid of this body or anything. No, like, we've seen that. Like, Let's say the previous scenes were all him covering his tracks. Like, landing he, in some, like, airport in the middle of nowhere. Like right, an okay. island or something. Maybe he knows the guy who's at that airport. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, it was, it was a scheduled stop for this particular wealthy person. And it just so happens to be like a rinky dink little landing strip. And yeah. our pilot happens to know the someone guy. there or like the, his stripper he likes is there or whatever. Somebody who has some connections and helps him sanitize and fake footage. Somebody dresses up like that person and walks by the cameras or whatever. And it's like, okay, well, it's an island. Rich people go there, they take a boat and they leave all the time. And there's been pirate activity or drug lords sometimes get involved and like, oh, you know what? We can tie it to, oh, what's the pedophile island? You know, that guy who had a private island. Epstein. And like, yeah. So it's like kind of an Epstein situation where, you know, clearly this wealthy person was going there to do some human trafficking, like kind of oh, activity, yeah. you know what I mean? And so like, the so fact no that one really he, pays attention. Yeah. There's a lot of explanations for where he could be. They're not really looking that hard. There's jurisdictional issues. There's other wealthy people who don't want this investigated. And maybe that ties into future murders where our pilot realizes there's kind of a loophole here where he can get away with it. And for reasons he doesn't understand, he's compelled to do it, to keep doing it. And not necessarily to people you would think. He kills some people that are like, doing bad things and other times he seems to kill for reasons that aren't as obvious to the audience you know what i mean i'm really clinging to and maybe i need to kill this darling but i'm clinging to the idea that he doesn't understand why he's doing this he doesn't see it coming it's not calculated like you brought up breaking bad which i get but in breaking bad i feel like walter discovered that he had this calculating drug lord in him and so he just discovered that partially by accident and partially by choice. And at the end of the series, he pays for this. But this character I see is totally different. I didn't even think of Breaking Bad because he's not breaking bad. He's breaking uh -huh. and he's doing bad things sometimes. So it's not discovering that he's efficient Dexter-like killer, but instead he's confused and lost. And he doesn't know why he's doing these things, but he's clinging to the life and this the idea of who he was. He's trying to cling to that. 
and he keeps getting away with stuff that he shouldn't normally because he's a pilot and he's flying and he's traveling and he's smart mm -hmm. and maybe he does this blackmail thing to get away with something at one point and they think it's about the money but he's covering a murder i really think there's a lot of potential to that but i don't know if it's just me I think there is a lot of potential. I think there's that's one of the many ways I think that you could take it effectively. What if he's getting blackmailed? Ooh. So what if he you're trying to make his... him saner than I am? I think there's a clear distinction. Like you want him anchored as a rational person, and I want him basically discovering there's psychosis in his family. You know what I mean? Like no, <laughs> I know. I know. We have a no clue. We have a different guy here as the main character. It's a very complicated setup. So there's Ooh, what, so oh, many. What if they're two guys? What if there's a pilot and a co-pilot? Like season one, we what? pick one and that's who we go with. But maybe season two or the sequel or the other half of the film or whatever, there's a co-pilot who is the other version. Who's the special forces person? Like training day. <laughs> Where you got yeah, a psycho. Okay. And then, yeah. okay. Yeah. Training day in the air. It's training day, except neither one of them are clear or honest about who they are. So you've got one pilot who's breaking and who's developing psychosis and the other one who has a secret agenda and a bunch of skills. And so they think that they can help each other or they can work together or they think they are working together, but in reality, it's not at all what either one of them thinks it is. Maybe the guy who's losing his mental capacity or losing control of his behavior and his thoughts and his persona thinks the other guy is trying to help him stabilize and cover his tracks and like give him another chance and you know help that side of him that wants control and the other guy thinks that they're working together to like take out whatever his agenda is like they're killing people and gonna get some massive payout or they're the, taking out bad guys and the people that go on the plane aren't random people there's like a reason for them being on the plane right right that could be something. okay let me finish this one train of thought that i have before I oh. forget. So let's say he lands in that rinky dink airport and mm -hmm. everything that you had said before happens. Like he kills that guy. No one cares at the airport. So he thinks, but then he's getting blackmailed because someone did see. Okay. Yes. Happened. Okay. Yeah. So then he's being manipulated into taking out these other billionaire guys, but we don't know what the big connection is because he's being manipulated by this kind of unseen figure until he like introduces himself as such. You see what I mean? I do. This strikes me. Remember that movie? Like Usual Suspects? Colin Farrell, I think, was in a movie where he answered the phone. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and it was booth? also like Die Hard 3. Wasn't that the, the plot of booth? Die Hard Phone Booth? Yes. And then Die Hard 3, that's like a lighter version of what you're saying? I'm, I'm sure. This the is only me. difference is you're having him blackmail. Like someone did something wrong. And then he gets pulled into a life of horrible things because he's desperate to avoid the consequences or because somebody has is taking advantage of him for one th mistake he made, basically. Is that right? Yeah, someone's taking advantage of the fact that he did that. And he's in a perfect position to kind of serve this person's needs mm -hmm. because he's a pilot, because he knows goes to all these private airports, et cetera. He gets put in situations or in flight plans of carrying passengers that are the enemies of this particular guy he's the guy that's kind of making them disappear and he's doing all this stuff and maybe there's a connection to this island i don't know maybe the whole thing is that they're all guys that are like visiting this particular island so now he has his kind of private murderer or like assassin on his payroll now but i like the other idea better it oh, seems do. a little more simplistic no i mean i think what you're saying is a popular concept you asked me why is he killing billionaires Part of my answer to that question is because right now, a lot of people hate billionaires uh -huh. and watching them get killed every week is going to draw an audience, mm -hmm. right? So you keep going back to the island. This is very similar to like somebody has to run drugs for a drug lord. They got mixed right. up with a drug lord and they have to drive a Winnebago, you know, across the border from Mexico to Texas uh -huh. or Texas to Mexico, right? And it's funny or it's serious. And it gets bloody or it gets hilarious and two people fall in love or whatever. But that's a popular plot line. And if you add this element of killing wealthy people and you make the kills interesting or good and the person doing it, maybe not 
super into it maybe he gets into it over time yeah. maybe he ends up enjoying it it accesses a side of him that's pretty dark but it is different than the other idea of the focus being on somebody falling apart i'm a little more fight club yeah. and you're a little bit more what the best prototypical example of that is i mean i think the phone group example okay yeah so like Allen. regular guy swept up swept up you know, in something bigger than himself and now he's that's a pretty dark and yeah and he's getting manipulated and he's doing things he never would do normally that are horrible but he's trying to justify it and the audience is kind of rooting for him yeah it's a more simplistic not paint by numbers type of plot but like it has a, a clear beginning middle and end in terms of like the character development it's more profitable sellable <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's interesting sellable. to studios is that <laughs> <what you're... laughs> Yeah, they'd be like, oh, it's like phone booth, but like that Denzel Washington movie where he's a pilot, flight or whatever. So combine those two and there you have it. Phone booth and flight at the same time. I thought it was a train. Wasn't he chasing a train at some point? Is that, I don't know. I those movies all run together. Flight, I think, is the one where he has a drug problem. Uh, and he ends up landing a plane, but he crashes it and a bunch of people die. Oh, yeah. It was right. pretty good. I mean, he's a great yeah. actor, so it but he doesn't do sense. a lot of bad movies. No, I like where you're going with that pilot co-pilot kind of scenario. I like, I like that. If if that were the dynamic, I would love that to keep the concept fresh. After I was going to say like season two, but maybe it's it's fine for like episode three or two even, or now well, maybe three or four. Like once you establish this guy, you know, who, whichever you start with, then you introduce the other one. I think then it's pretty interesting. Because now you've got more dialogue because there's two people in the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you don't have to act with pure facial expressions. Right, right. <laughs> so maybe over. that's a lot better. Voice over. I was so hung over that day when I was piloting. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's <laughs> when I discovered the blood. Yeah, that's not cool. Let me ask you this. Yes. What if this were a movie? Okay. What are the key plot points that you see making this whole thing come together where you can develop your character of someone falling apart? in that 90 minute to two hour time window that you'd have in a movie what okay so if it were a movie i would start off with some sort of like credits montage showing that he is a remarkably well put together example of what you would want out of a professional pilot which would make sense because he has you know, a nice plane and expensive and it's a very niche area that has a high demand and, you know, it's, he's got to be responsive and professional and deal with all sorts of unexpected, we need to be here and deal with this storm or that thing and all that. And so he's very well put together and you establish that very clearly. Then I would want to surprise the audience by completely shifting the tone when he starts to break down, going back to that scene I was trying to paint where it's like, everything seems fine, but it's an unusual flight. Things are getting a little bit out of control and he seems to be struggling more than you would think based on what you've seen of him so far. And then there's a short time jump and it's a bloody mess, right? I would want to do that. Like, I mean, obviously everybody would see it in the trailer, but I would want it to be a surprise to somebody who walked into the theater cold, which by the way, is the best way to see a movie. Just glance at the poster, walk in, and sit down and watch it. Like, that is, without a doubt, my best experience. I saw Sling Blade that way. I was like, oh, I heard it's good. I don't know anything about it. Awesome. I still remember being surprised the whole time. So anyway, you set that up. That gets the plot going. Then I would want to throw a twist at him. Maybe you think, okay, yeah, the story is going to be that he's trying to get away with murder, basically. Like, he's trying to get away with murder. But then, a second kill for me, would be like the twist where he did it again. Why did he do that again? Yeah. Like, it seemed like he was getting away with it. Then I would, you know, have this like, you know, I guess I'd have to kind of rush it because I was thinking of it as a series, but his arc would be to ultimately realize that he can't control himself and that he's not who he was at all. Just abandon everything about his prior life and i guess if it's a movie i would have him realize that someone that in his life that you know he never worked with or that was a big disappointment or a failure is actually compatible with this new version of him in whatever messed up way they end up living wherever that is however different it is actually the two of them fit and then i would kind of leave it there 
the two of them being like a relationship that he's in or I like his co-pilot so I, doing I now i want to make this a comedy now i don't know why but i want it to be like a it ends it's like a buddy cop ending except they you know they kill people sometimes uh -huh. <laughs> like it's your i'm bringing back your guy and I'm making it kind of funny at the end. And in the end, they realize his PTSD, your guy's PTSD from guerrilla action or whatever military training that he had and experience actually kind of fits nicely with this person's evolving schizophrenia or, you know, sociopathy. Uh -huh. Like they actually kind of fit together in a weird kind of funny way that gets dark, you know, and uh -huh. then they drive off, you know, maybe with a body in the trunk. Kind of like know. a zombie land type of. Yes. Maybe they find their place where their brand of weirdness actually kind of works. You were going after something, though, when you asked me that question. What were you going after? I was if going it's a after, movie. No, because I kept thinking about it as a movie. But then right? when you kept bringing up ideas about the complexity of this character, I was like, I don't know how that's actually going to work mm. as a movie to have such a complicated character in such a short amount of time. Fight Club worked. Yeah. yeah it's a it different worked. character, but he was complicated. Right? Yeah, that's true. I was thinking about your version was such a complicated character as a much longer series. And then I, I was thinking of like the one, the version that I was talking about had these like action plot points. Yes. That kind of You're hitting beats. Yeah. That kind of drive everything forward. And now I'm thinking like, if this was some kind of like dark comedy, wouldn't it be kind of funny that you think that people are going to be really like worried about where this guy is, this billionaire guy, right? But it turns mm -hmm. out at the end, you realize that they were all working to not have him ever be found in their own way. Oh, that'd be awesome. Like the I detective, love that like reveal. The detective yeah. Yeah. He gets rid of certain key pieces of ed evidence. The judge is <laughs> literally been trashing it. Yeah. You know, the ex-wife <laughs> yeah. is comes up with an alibi for like, yeah. you know, they're all kicking things is. under the rug. Yeah. They're all kicking <laughs> things under the rug. Awesome. But, you know, yeah, but you basically think this whole time that it's this very serious investigation until the right. end. Kind and of he's, like all, a, he's just on the verge of getting caught the yeah. whole time. Right. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah, and he's he losing that. his mind because he's trying to figure out how to. So if it's a comedy, he's watching movies where people cover up crimes yeah. and like documentaries about successful killers. And he's listening to podcasts, you know, about how people get away with murder. And he's like going back and like trying to do every single thing. And then in the end, you find out that people have literally been tossing evidence like off They're the like, cliff. Oh, we hated that guy. And his ex-wife's <laughs> like, oh, I hate, I, I've they been know trying to that kill him for killed years. Him. You know, I've been they all to, know I, that he did it. <laughs> and they're trying to protect him. And it's oh my god! It's a usual suspects reveal at the end where they've been like feeding him things, uh -huh. <laughs> giving him subtle clues, like even in the interrogation, like how to get out of it. Even the lawyer is like trying to help him out. Like, <laughs> That would be not his movie. lawyer the other lawyer, the other lawyer is like yeah. trying to prosecute is trying to help him out the whole time the whole thing is just this elaborate ruse to make sure that this guy doesn't spend one day in jail yeah because they've been uh, wanting to get rid of this guy for ages because like, that guy is so bad he's just he was so so horrible that people think it's a good deed to protect the person who finally killed him yep and they this all, guy he has no idea him. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, they've even talked to each other. They they're frustrated. There's a scene like a usual suspects flashback scene where uh -huh. they're talking and they're frustrated that uh -huh. he keeps doing stupid things. Like he poured bleach all over the rug. <laughs> the forensics guys in the yeah. next shot. There's like a forensics guy sitting there and he's tearing up a report. Uh -huh. <laughs> or he's going back in to pour something that neutralizes bleach. He lights the plane on fire to get rid of the evidence. <laughs> like the whole thing. And and maybe it's even like a short film you know what i mean it's like a 45 minute movie as opposed uh, to even like a, a whole hour and a half because it's like uh, all yeah. based around this one thing that happens but i just thought that would be really silly if that were the whole plot of it i love He's it just, i think that's funny everyone's helping him and they're like you know we know right mm. and he's like you know what you know and it's like we know it was you this whole time and he's just a completely clueless or maybe he's just clueless to begin with maybe the way this guy dies like he thinks he had something to do with it but he didn't like slipped and fell and hit his oh, head on the edge so he never something. killed him anyway yeah but he had been turned around for a second he didn't even realize he got distracted or something and there was turbulence and the guy fell he had something to do with it just something so goofy and ridiculous 
it sounds like dumb and dumber now. It's right? getting there. Yeah. We've gone from the exploration of somebody losing their sanity and taking <laughs> wealthy people out with them, you know, and potentially crashing their plane into a school bus, right? Uh -huh. And then we've so worked now. our way all the way up to <laughs> dumb and dumber four. It's like snakes on a plane, part two. <laughs> Actually, for the billion. It's not even that sophisticated yeah. at this point. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Okay, so this is a question we should ask the our single listener. Uh, yes. Is this better as a like an HBO series or a uh, who else has good stuff going these days? Paramount uh, Plus, uh, <laughs> HBO Max, CBS All Access. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so is this better as like a dark drama where you watch someone who's very buttoned up? gradually fall apart and kill a lot of rich people along the way drugs and sort of heavy themes and the occasional you know cheesy instagram model you know guest or episode where it's a little bit lighter but there's always this darkness right there's always this person falling apart do we like that number one do we like number two the more action intrigue corporate espionage thriller where our pilot has agency and direction and he's a sane person who chooses to kill voluntarily <laughs> and has the skills to do it for that option. What's, is there a third one before we get to Dumb and Dumb? The buddy, it's like the buddy comedy. Okay, the blending of the two, right? Yeah. Where we bring blending those two the, characters two. together. Yeah, exactly. And they end up realizing that in this crazy world, they fit together yep. and ride off in the sunset. Like Thelma and Louise, but they don't drive into there you go. a canyon. They exactly. just ride off, and ride, drive off into the sunset. Minus the suicide. Yeah. <laughs> and Brad Pitt. Because we'll have a sequel. Or do we do this last one where it's a usual suspects comedy? Uh, basically, I guess if you like that conceptualization where he thinks he's covering up a murder... But in the end, you find out that he was actually doing it terribly, and it takes a village, Leave maybe via notes. some flashbacks. Leave Good. your notes in the comments. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Send us a, a mail, a letter. Yeah, a letter to P.O. Box. <laughs> <laughs> Send a postcard with your choices to be entered to win. You can get another free episode. That's your Anything box. else? What else, do, what else do we need the audience to fix? Right now, they need to fix everything because they need to choose a plot for us, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> choose the character arc, choose just a the few theme. things. Yeah, just just a few things. The general key tone. events, yeah, <laughs> length. Whether it's a mini series, a film, a webisode series, the uh, rest of the traditional, soundtrack, <laughs> yeah, the rest of the soundtrack, a traditional series. What do we have, and where is it going to air? Just a few things. And they need to pay us money for it. I guess somebody ideally would do that at some point where yeah. they would, so we can start writing it. Some guy would take a cigar out of his mouth and go, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Print it. Here's a, Susan, get these men a hundred million dollars. I want this done by the end of the month. <laughs> I was just reading a book, actually, for all you listeners, about this guy. Hi, who's Mom. A, hello. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> hello. Hey, Mom. About how there's this reader in one of these studios or production companies, and this manuscript came across his desk. And this guy has been reading for a really, really long time. He never gives anything a vote of confidence. He doesn't like anything he reads, gets really low marks in the coverage that he gives to his boss. And he's mm -hmm. known for that. One day, he gets a manuscript, and he reads it, and it has a funny title. And he gets to the end, he reads it in one sitting, which he never does. And he's like, this is the most incredible thing I've ever read. We need to make this movie. Okay. So he sends it up to his VP and she's like, this is, this is impossible because you give everything such horrible coverage and everything gets like, don't make a movie out of it. And he's like, read this thing. So long story short, she reads it. She runs up to the head of the production company, some huge production company, throws a manuscript on his desk and she's like, you have to make this movie. And he reads it. His answer to her is, no, I just don't think this wizard school thing is going to work. <laughs> that was riveting, by that the way. Was. I was riveted the entire time. It was like <laughs> a modern fairy tale. <laughs> and so this was a it. novel manuscript then, right? Yeah. Okay. That, so that he read a whole true. novel manuscript in one sitting? Yeah, well, it might have been the screenplay adaptation that someone had made of that novel. So they were 
offering it for $500,000 to a studio. He thought, A, it's too expensive, and B, he doesn't like the concept of wizard school. It's never going to work. Because it's too similar to Harry Potter is your point, right? Exactly. Too similar. (laughs) (laughs) This has been done already. (laughs) Get out of my office. (laughs) So, yeah, it's... um, I just found that story very funny. So and that's your word of caution to anyone that would consider our manuscripts when they come exactly. across their desk. And it comes across their desk and they're going to say, you know what? I don't like pilots and I don't yep. like billionaires and I don't like the combination. So we're not going to make it. So yep. that's just a but, word of But warning. I'm afraid of passing on the next Harry Potter. So let's do it. <laughs> get these guys on the phone. Can you get some kids into this exactly. story? Can they have some magic powers? It was it okay? a warning. What if the pilot's 12 and he's got a scar on his face? (laughs) Maybe he's the one. It was the warning in the form of a parable. So for all you listeners out there. All you wealthy audience members (laughs) who want to see a movie about people like yourself getting killed. (laughs) Maybe you run a studio, right? Maybe you live in a city where maybe you just have a cell phone camera. If you've got enough money. You've got, got a spare two hundred million dollars in your bank account that's just sitting there, and you're thinking about passing on this. Don't. That's right. You all can't. of my stories, all of my ideas are something meets Harry Potter from now on. That's as what. they should be. <laughs> he flies to a wizarding school exactly. sometimes. There's an I was episode say of that. that. <laughs> Brilliant minds. We finally got on the same page right? with this pitch. And there's a talking cat <laughs> and an owl. <laughs> In some sort of game they have to play where they something. chase something around with their airplanes yeah. in the air. Yeah. And it flies around and they have to hit it with brooms, maybe. Yeah. This is the best idea yet. This I is see amazing, this is right? It's Harry think- Potter. <laughs> it's Breaking Bad. <laughs> He's on a plane. Meets phone booth. Meets Dumb and Dumber. Meets Dumb and Dumber. It's like a ping pong ball plot. Or wait, a, wait. Uh, I want the audience. Plot. Okay. All two of you, you please send me your two-line pitch for Harry Potter meets Dumb and Dumber. Because now <laughs> I absolutely need to see that movie. On a plane. On a plane. <laughs> could be on a plane. Or it could be on Pedophile Island. Whatever. I'm flexible. Anywhere you want to set it, you can set it wherever, wherever you want. However, you, which way you want to write it, too. It's fine. Yep. Just as long as we get our check. We'll take it. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll ruin it a little bit. And we'll cash in. <laughs> Shake it up, give it a spin, and we're all set. We're never going to make any money what for our ideas yeah, ever. Amazing. This we're is just <laughs> absolutely <laughs> doomed. Just... Yeah. Any treatments from here on out, they're going nowhere but the trash bin. Uh, we're well, I think have we've proven folders and folders of these episodes just <laughs> yeah, waiting. I can't wait waiting for the re- retirement home where we sit in the rocking right. chairs and just play them back. Play right? the snakes on a plane, dumb and dumber episode. I want to hear it again. Play it yeah. again. Turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. Yep. Uh, it. Anything else? Anything else we need to say? Any questions for the audience? Any um, other ideas? If they're still there, if you're still listening. I know We're it's really sorry. late at night. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if you need help with your life, there are numbers you can call. <laughs> Just don't call us. Yeah, seriously. All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you to the creative professionals who made all the projects we mentioned on this episode. Thanks. What? Oh, really? Okay. They're still talking. Hold on. And so. (laughs) That was was gold. That was gold. Kermit takes a bullet. Take two. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Eddie, what? Um, So they write themselves into a corner. The Coen brothers. Coen brothers. Yeah. Yep. And they always have really original scripts. And the pacing of all their scripts is is so unique because of that. So they'll keep going and they'll write and write and write and write until every character is back into a corner. Uh So because of the fact that they do that, they have to figure out a crazy way to get them out of that situation, which makes those movies so unique. They're not writing everything down like you would outline a normal movie. It's like them looking at these characters that they're putting together and moving them along a basic plot until they can't move them anymore. And at that point, that's when they know things are going to get really interesting because in that ricocheting bullet one, it's like introducing that just throws such a wrench into the plot. Mm -hmm. It's like, now what do we do? Like, what is this movie about? Who's the protagonist? And what are these characters all about when the movie is just going along normally? And then it's like, damn, 
there's a twist. It's coming it's her a hair. huge twist. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just no, like I that. like that. So with the idea we were discussing, I shied away from that, right? I never cornered the protagonist, but I think that's a good strategy, especially if it's going to be a film. At some point, our pilot or whomever needs to be cornered, and we didn't even get to that, mm -hmm. right? If he's a Steven Seagal type, you know, at what point is he in the back of the plane trying to get to the front of the plane for autopilot, but he's, you know, there's a bunch of ninjas in his way. Or is it the stewardess that now is a protagonist? Ooh. Like she's been in the plane the whole time, but a minor character. And maybe uh -huh. the pilot dies. Oh, and that other guy. So Steven Seagal like dies. Steven Seagal Eight dies. ninjas finally managed to kill him. Mm -hmm. So now she's the only one left. But she knows how to fly. And there's still an one ninja. Pilot. There's still one ninja. Like that, um, what is that movie called? Not American Ninja. It's a comedy. Beverly Jim Hills Cotta. Ninja. Oh, Beverly Hills. Uh, Farley. Yep. It's like Beverly Hills Ninja. But yeah, you see that whole concept of writing yourself I like into it. a corner? Tell me to corner the protagonist. You yeah. Know? Do something dramatic that puts the, forces the story to take a whole new direction. And maybe it's the investigator who becomes the main character all of a sudden. So you think it's about a pilot, mm -hmm. but then you throw like a major, like, or the plane crashes or whatever during their struggle. You know, he can't get back into the cockpit or whatever. Yeah. So you think it's about something, but then it's really about something else. I so you that. started building up the pilot. I love that. That's even better because that opens up so many cool things like his stripper ex-wife who became a stripper after they got divorced, mm -hmm. right? It seems like your kind of typical side character that brings some interesting moments to scenes, but then he gets killed by maybe the investigator or something, and she's thrown into the main character position for the rest of the movie. That's interesting. There's a, a novel, it's called Queen of the South, and I believe the plot is that there's a huge drug lord in Mexico who's clearly the protagonist of the novel, but he ends up dying and the woman has to take over as his wife and she doesn't okay. know anything about the business whatsoever. I think it's possible that she didn't even know that he was a drug lord, but then it's like the whole moral conflict of what does she do? But she ends up going into it because she's kind of pulled into it just by the circumstances. Yeah. It's kind of like that, but in a, on a smaller level, right? Where you have like the unlikely fish out of water type of character who is now in the lead. But I think with this writing ourselves into a corner or like discussing plots in this way, it just leaves you open, like you said, so many different possibilities of right. what it could actually be about. Because you can yeah. kind of follow the character or a group of characters and still be confused as to what, what's actually happening. Like who's taking mm -hmm. over and who should you be rooting for and not rooting for. Yeah. Like but that. it's hard. I think it's a hard thing to do because mm -hmm. you typically write with a general outline of all your plot points that are gonna to happen to, to get a resolution around mm -hmm. a main character. Once you start playing that game, you know, you have a whole different movie with a completely different plot. You can even change the genre. Yeah. You know, all of a yeah. sudden. Totally. Okay, I think they finally worn themselves out and are ready to go down for a nap. If you'd like to reach the pod, shoot an email to don'tencourage at gmail.com. Please don't like or subscribe. Please don't send links to your friends. If you encourage these guys, they're just going to keep making more of these episodes. But if you made it this far, thanks for listening. See you next week. Bye.